the many faces of our moon. To us here in the United States, our moon has a face. But to East Asian cultures, the moon has a rabbit or a toad on it. Hawaiians see a tree, and in India, they see two hands. We humans all look up at the same moon, but we don't all see it the same way. The rabbit or toad in the moon comes from the ancient story of Chang'e, a woman who stole an elixir of immortality and swallowed it. In her attempt to escape, she jumped and floated to the moon. She may have transformed into a toad as punishment or a rabbit to indicate her beauty, but either way, the animal is working a mortar and pestle to make more elixir. The Polynesian story comes from a goddess who is named Hina. She makes cloth for the gods from the banyan tree. In the Hawaiian language, the word for moon is mahina, based on her name. She moved to the moon because it was just nice there, and she sits in the space under the banyan tree. But that's not all. In India, mythology describes two handprints. These prints were left, according to legend, by Astangi Mata, the mother of all that lived and grew on Earth. She wanted to give a gift to her children, Chandra and Siraj. Siraj became the sun, and Chandra became the moon. As Mata reached out to touch Chandra's face one last time, she left two handprints on the moon. The other man in the moon isn't a face like in the United States. Instead, it's a literal man holding a bundle of sticks. And this shape predates the discovery of the new world. And the old man is referenced in the works of Shakespeare and Chaucer in England, as well as Germany and elsewhere. Allegedly, the man violated the Sabbath and was doomed to spend eternity on the moon as a reminder to others. The great thing is, when you head to the southern hemisphere, the orientation of the moon appears to flip. The moon looks different, which means we get a whole new set of myths. For example, the Maori of New Zealand had a legend where a woman, Rona, fought with her husband and the moon overheard. When Rona trips in the dark, she curses the moon over and over and as punishment, the moon pulls her into the sky to live with him. She tries to stop him by grabbing a tree, but both end up in the sky. Eventually, Rona realizes her mistakes and she falls in love with the moon. The moon gives her the ability to control the tides. And I love these myths because it helps us better understand each other. For example, the Indian Space Agency, they named their lunar landing mission Chandrayaan, and the Chinese named theirs Chang'e, both names that you would recognize from these myths. The brain's tendency to see shapes that aren't actually there is called periodolia. Human brains, we want to make shapes and patterns that fit with our understanding of the world. It's why we think clouds look like animals, why cars look like they're smiling at us, and why we make shapes with the stars or on the moon. Our brains are filling in the gaps with our own assumptions and experiences, creating a story where objectively there are simply random crater impacts and colored patches of lunar soil. So next time you're looking at Luna, try and spot the rabbit, the woman, the two men, the two hands, the tree, and of course the face. One person's man is another person's tree. I'm Trace, and I'm going to go point my face at the sky to try and see even more shapes. I hope you'll join me and keep looking up.